see tracks of particles produced by antimatter. So you'll be showing me some antimatter in action. Five years after Dirac came up with his prediction, antimatter was discovered. The equation had turned out to be true. Now, I too want to see the proof. This is the first practical place uh, I've been to on this one. <laughs> I'm right. surprised at how quaint everything looks. This is a very simple experiment. This is very low tech. Yes. And you could do this in your kitchen. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, so um, this is a magnet. Actually, we can see it's a fairly powerful magnet. And so we're going to put dry ice on here, so that will be very cold. Okay. The sort of cookery element at the moment. It is. Cooking uh, this is the first fish in salt. Yeah. Magnet. Okay. Now. The Perspex box is going to go on top, mm -hmm. and uh, there is alcohol that we put in the upper layer. And uh, in order to see the tracks, they're actually quite faint, we have to illuminate it with a very bright lamp. Okay. And then one of the other ingredients that we should uh, explain here is the radioactive sources that we're going to use. So uh, we have two radioactive sources. One emits uh, electrons, yeah. uh, and the other emits positrons. And so yeah. what we have here is an isotope of strontium called strontium-90. Glenn told me that these radioactive materials would let us see the tracks of electrons, and more importantly, the antimatter partner to the electron. Known as the positron, this is the particle predicted by Dirac's equation. It emits positrons, and we'll see tracks that are very similar, mm -hmm. right? maybe slightly lower energy, actually, uh, and they will be bending to the left. Okay. And, and so that really is the demonstration that we have two types of particles that uh, really look very similar in terms of the tracks that they make, mm -hmm. except that one is positively charged and the other is negatively charged. I'll try to do this rather quickly. So I've yeah. seen a couple. Yeah, yeah, I saw one going that way. And furthermore, they should be bending to yeah. the right, and they are. They're, uh, they're thin and irregular. It's like a string of beads almost. Okay, so all I've really convinced you of that you can see so far are bog standard electrons. Right, right. right. So these are just even uh, at the bog standard <laughs> level, it's pretty <laughs> impressive. We're all made of plenty of those. Ordinary. And so I, uh, maybe what we can try now is to uh, put in the positron source. Yeah. And hopefully, what we should see is that they will bend in the opposite direction. So the other one's slotted in scientifically, and this one you just sort of that's stick right. On we're there. just going to hold it on mm -hmm. to the entrance way. So now I should expect to see things going to the left. I'm seeing activity, but not necessarily lines going to the left. Well, actually, I just saw a couple of... We'd seen the electrons bend to the right. Now, Glenn hoped that we might spot the rarer antimatter tracks as they curve towards the other side. That one there, there very, very clear, there yeah. Very, yeah, there fantastic. <laughs> so that, that's the first time in this experiment that I've seen the antimatter. There you go. That was definitely coming from the source. The amazing thing is to have something from a sort of comic world of science fiction, antimatter, to have it uh, presented to us in, uh, in reality. Except I wasn't looking at that one. But <laughs> every uh, 30, 40 seconds, a little blip occurs within a sort of 10p size radius of the source. It shoots out, curls around, doesn't go very far. Then one, there, one there, very, there was, very curly that one. Was a clear yeah, one. Yeah, shot right round. Very good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're, so we're, we're really seeing a physical thing which um, connects to the very complicated mind world of Paul Dirac. That's right. Somehow the, the existence of antimatter, you know, emerges as a necessary consequence of, of 